Good evening, BookTube, YouTube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a video since my wife is gone. It is March the 25th. It is a Monday evening here in Holland, Michigan. I'm getting my April 2024 diary ready. Uh, I'm going to use purple for the month of April. So yeah, it's a Monday. I thought I'd do Monday reads, but first I do my diary here. So I hope you're having a good Monday. Today, got up into the 60s. It wasn't too bad. But I did go to local thrift stores because I had to I had to go pick up a prescription. So it's April 2024. And so I picked up some used books today. And I got I got a um I got a book in the mail. And I'll show that in a minute. So So yeah, it was a typical Monday. April 2004. So yeah, I mean, I basically I wrote, I mean, I read today, I've been reading St. John of the Cross, The Ascent of Mark Carmel. I've been doing that last couple of days. I've just been reading a lot of it. I don't know. It's kind of like when I'm out of it. I told you I kind of read literature that's kind of contemplative and kind of it's a reread for me. Like I said, I've been reading St. John the Cross for almost 50 years. And I read them every, like I said, at the beginning of every year, I read through him and other spiritual writers, I, the Carthusians. I read through that. Now I'm reading through St. John the Cross. I'm reading the Sint of Mount Carmel, and then I have the, the Dark Knight, and then I go into reading the uh, the spiritual canticle. So now I have, I made a mistake. Can you see the mistake? I, I put a APR. A R, it's supposed to be A P R. See, I'm not paying attention. They won't bug me. So, yeah. Today I ended on my paper diary for March. I ended on page 277 for the year 2024. So yeah, I, first of all, what I get in the mail. This is a Monday Reads. What I get in the mail. I got this in the mail today. I belong to this group in Facebook called Librarius. It's that people show their libraries, pictures of their libraries, bookstores, institutional libraries, all kinds of libraries all over the world. And somebody had the writings of Bruce Chapman. And I have his writings, but I didn't know, wait a minute, it's good. No, I didn't know by his letters. And I found this for $2. <laughs> And uh, Mid Midtown Scholar Books, uh, $5 post. It came to $6, but it's in perfect condition. And I collect his writings, and I didn't have his letters, so I got that in the mail. I did finish reading uh, The Long Corner by Alexandra Mitchkit. I finished this yesterday. When I was talking to my wife about it, I kind of said if I was to, I have a um, a Goodreads account, 
and I told her I'd give it three stars. I don't believe in this two, three, four, five stars. But usually, most things I read, very rarely do I give a three star. I usually give a four, a four star. Rarely, if anything, a five star. At first, I told my wife I would give this a three star read, but when I finished it, it had a really a, a good ending. It was not uh, something um, original, but it had a good ending. So I wound up giving it four stars in my Goodreads account. I thought about doing a book review about it. I did, I told you, I ordered another novel of his that's supposed to come in the mail. This came out in 2022. This one, this is the Europia edition. That's why I first got it, because I collect Europia. And I haven't been dissatisfied reading Europia books. And I, I can't, I've read a lot of them over the years, and I haven't been disappointed with any of them I can think of. They're not like the New York Review classics. They're kind of like, it's hard to categorize them, but they're not literary fiction, but they're not uh, entertainment fiction. They're kind of like, and they're always, most of them are in translations. This is not a translation. Uh, no, he's an American writer. But this came out in 2022. The one I gave coming in the mail came out was his first novel in 2011. And that's the one I'm going to, it's called uh, You Deserve Nothing, what is the one that's coming in the mail that I bought used. So I'm going to read his first one, 2011, and compare it to this one. But I don't know. It was an okay read. I, it was an interesting story. Um, so, yeah. And I, I showed you it. I got the show I got Flannery, A Life of Flannery O'Connor by Brad Cooch. I told you, I showed you, I had gotten the Library of America edition of the collected works of Flannery O'Connor. I already had her short stories, I had her letters, but I didn't have a biography, and then I, I bought this biography. He also wrote this biography. Uh, Brad Cooch, City Poet, The Life and Times of Frank O'Hare. So he wrote, these are both considered, uh, I don't know, outstanding uh, biographies on Frank O'Hare, the poet. Frank O'Hare is one of my favorite poets. He was a, a, called the, the New York City kind of poets. And, uh, he died tragically, in an, but this, I read this a while back, can't remember when I read it, if I read the whole thing, but I start rereading it at the night, just before I go to bed at night, and he also wrote this one on Flannery O'Connor, so. I, I told you I got the selected letters of Don Powell. 1913 to 1965. Been reading her biography too, by Don Powell, biography by Tim Page. Been reading her uh, her diaries. This is also the diaries of Don Powell, 1931 to 1965, edited in introduction by Tim Page. Such as Monday Reads, I did read this this afternoon. The Freaks came out to write the definitive history of the Village Voice, the radical paper that changed American culture by Teresa Romano. Yeah, I try to read nonfiction in the afternoons and I was kind of tired. I'm mean, still tired. But since I was reading about New York City in 1930s, I thought I'd read about the Village Voice, which is a newspaper in New York City. It's about its history from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, maybe up to the 2000s. Uh, I don't know. So I thought I'd stick with the New York City. And uh, so these are the used books I found. Going, I had to go 
get a prescription at Family Fair. It's about five minutes. And they're around where I live. There's Action House. There's Goodwill. There's Legacy. There's Gateway Thrift Store. I found most of these at Goodwill. Uh, and they're all that I collect. These people I collect or subject matters I collect. This is by Rebecca Solit. Recollections of My Non-Existence. This is her memoirs. I have two other books of her of hers in my library. And I like biographies. And so I picked this up. I pick up the he's an Israeli writer. This is Amos Oz. I collect him. This is the black box. A novel by him. I don't really see his his novels or his writings uh, that often, but I was surprised. I'd never seen this one before, The Black Box. This is a vintage international edition of The Black Box. He's an Israeli writer. Uh, oh, there's an article in here. What's this, the paper here? I don't know what that is. Anyway. Picked this up at Goodwill. Then I picked up, I picked this up at Action House. And when I went to the library, my library thing to catalog it, I already had it. But it's Raymond Carver. Uh, will you please be quiet? Will you please be quiet? Please stories by Richard Carver. I already had this, but I wasn't really sure. And to me, when I buy a book at Action House, all the money goes to help people in need. Food banks, clothing, furniture, other necessities. So it always goes for a good cause. So now I got two copies. I have four other novels by Colson Whitehead, but I've never seen this one. He wrote The Underground Railroad uh, it's called the Zone One. And when I cataloged it in library thing, it said it's dystopia or science fiction. And I didn't know he wrote science fiction. It says here in the back, a pandemic has devastated the planet, sorting humanity into two types, the uninfected and the infected, the living and the living dead. After the worst of the plague is over, armed forces stationed in Chinatown's Fort Wonton have successfully reclaimed the island south of Canal, Canal Street, a.k.a. Zone 1. Mark Splitz is a member of one of the three-person civilian sweeper units tasked with clearing Lower Manhattan of the remaining Friedel zombies. <laughs> Zone 1 unfolds over three surreal days during which Splitz, Spitch is occupied with the mundane mission of stagger removal and rigors of post-apocalyptic stress disorder, PASD, and the impossible task of coming to terms with a fallen world, then things start to go terribly wrong. So I don't know, I have other novels by them, so I just got this one. I also had this, but I wasn't sure about it. He's an Irish writer, Cohen Tobin, to Tobin, Nora Webster, I already have this. I didn't have this. I picked, I went to the library, our local library. They still sell used books. Just a little rack. And it was Napoleon's Wars, International History, 1803 to 1815 by Charles S. Daly. I collect books on Napoleon and European history. And so I got this, it cost me 250. I found this at Goodwill. This was a fine. <laughs> this is Cormac McCarthy's. Uh, he, before he died, he published two novels. They're both, I suppose, connected somehow. But this is one of them, uh, The Passenger by Cormac McCarthy. This is, I found this at Goodwill. It only cost me a dollar. It's an, almost brand new. Looks like a person didn't even read it. So I got that. Maybe I'll find the other one. I can't remember what the other one's titled. It's called, oh, I don't know what it's called. Anyway, 
I have almost all of his writings and I didn't have his newest one. I did pre-order them and then I canceled the order thinking I'd find them used because people tend to pick him up because he's in, he's a, in, the, in the news and they buy his novels and then they kind of find them difficult to read, not the general literary taste and so they get rid of them. So I did find one of them, you know, I only got it for a dollar. Then I, I had this already in my library. I collect the writings of the, uh, by uh, Edward W. Stead, Out of Place, a memoir. I already had this, but I wasn't sure. Uh, so I got it. Uh, it's a reject from the Grand Rapids Library. But yeah, I collect his writings, Edward W. Stead. He is, he was, he's passed away, university professor of English, comparative literature, Columbia University. He is the author of 17 books, including Orientalism, which he's famous for, nominated for the National Book Critics Circle Award. He wrote a book called Culture and Imperialism, a representation of the intellectual. I have his writings. He's a, uh, I don't want to use the word uh, a Muslim or Islamic intellectual. I think he was born in, maybe Palestinian, maybe that's kind of, I don't know. But anyway, I collect his writings and I found this. So anything I have doubles up, I put in a box and then I take them to Blue Stockings Bookshop for in-store credit. But I didn't have the passenger, the, one of the new Carmack McCarthy's novels, collect Napoleon Wars, I collect books on Napoleon, European history, 19th century European history. I had this one, the Norrell Webster, like it's historical fiction, by Coven Tobin. I didn't have Colson Whitehead's The Zone 1, a dystopia kind of science fiction novel. I had Robert, uh, Raymond Carver's stories, Will You Please Be Quiet? Will You Please Be Quiet? <laughs> I didn't have Amos Haas, Oz, which I collect, The Black Box. I didn't have Rebecca Solet, Sonet's memoirs, Recollection of a Non-Existence. Been reading in the mornings and afternoons the mystical treatise, The Ascent of Mark Carmel by St. John the Cross. I finished reading the novel, The Long Corner by Alexander Minchkitch. I got the letters, uh, Under the Sun, the letters of Bruce Chadwick by Brad, Bruce Chadwick, selected and edited by Elizabeth Chadwick. But, and Nicholas Shakespeare. Nicholas Shakespeare wrote a really fine biography on Bruce Chadwick, which I read a number of years ago. He also wrote novels, I think I have in my library somewhere. So I've been reading this afternoon, The Freaks Came Out to Write, The Definitive History of the Village Voice, and the Radical Paper That, paper that Changed American Culture by Ter Teresa Mano, Romano. Reading the diaries of Don Powell, 1931 to 1965, edited with an introduction by Tim Page. Reading Don Powell's a biography by Tim Page. Have not got in into the letters of selected letters of Don Powell. Have not got in into that. I don't know when I'll get around to reading Flattery, Flannery, A Life of Flannery O'Connor, by Brad Cooch. And I've been rereading The City Poet, The Life of Times of Frank O'Hara by Brad Cooch. Always reading the poetry of Frank O'Hara. So that's uh, my Monday reads. <laughs> so even though I'm kind of out of it, I'm always reading, I'm always writing, I'm always looking for books. I'm always writing in my paper diary. So I got my paper, my April diary ready, even though I kind of messed up on the print, but it doesn't bother me because I, I write, I put the, I 
then I storm away down the lower level and I won't see him because I have left uh, instructions that if I drop dead, that my diaries are to be hauled out into a field, pour gasoline on them and set fire to them. <laughs> because it's just this, you know, you do things, you get my age, you didn't realize 50 years ago or 45 years ago that you would be writing and that it would accumulate so massively. <laughs> like, okay, Bruce, uh, Bruce Chatlin, he kept moleskins and they still have them in a rare library collection, his moleskins. He was a travel writer. He traveled the world. If you read about him, he, he, he traveled and he, he kept moleskins. He was always writing in a moleskin. And they still have those. If I had kept moleskins instead of writing like this, it'd be easy. I could put them on a box. <laughs> but, <coughs> but anyway, so that's my Monday reads. I got books coming in the mail all week until the end of the month. And uh, I don't know, it's a Monday, I might go to Gateway. I haven't gone to Gateway this, this week, uh, thrift store, but I got all these books for $8. Can't go wrong. Plus I donated an extra dollar, so it was $9. I got this book for $2, $5, well about, yeah, it was $6.90 something. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I, I suppose I, the long corner. It was a, it was okay. Read. It was okay. It just reminded me of a, a good Netflix kind of movie, <laughs> but it had a good ending. I mean, you know, it's hard to when you come a novel that has a satisfactory, uh, an, an ending that you can believe to be believable. That didn't seem to be just rushed or suddenly it came to an end. It had a really good ending. Uh, and I do look forward to reading his novel, You Deserve Nothing. So yeah, I'm reading, I am enjoying her diaries. I should read her novels. <laughs> so anyway, I'll sign off. I just thought I'd do a Monday reads, tell you what I'm reading, what used books I got today. When I went out to get a prescription, I just pass these thrift stores, you know, if you're a book person like me, you can't pass by a used bookstore. You can't pass by a thrift store or you just can't. You just got to go look. You might find some rare gem. <laughs> so now it is 6.03 in the evening on a Monday. I'll sign off. Hope you all had a good reading weekend. Have a good reading week. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments and do pray you're all doing well. And until next time, bye.